Today's episode is brought to you by Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the show, go to patreon.com slash joshuarvelas and become a $2 backer today and get early access to the new episodes. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below, but for now, on to today's episode. You're listening to the Augment Experience Podcast. I'm your host, as usual, Josh Ravellis. I'm a student, musician, and a gamer at heart. Join me as I sit down every week to talk about all the latest news in the technology, business, and video game world. I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome back to the show. My name is Joshua Vels. I'm your host as usual, and obviously, welcome back to the show. Today's episode 238 of the show, and before we get started, we're just going to do a little bit of house cleaning quick, because you guys know we like to do it around here, so it only makes sense if we do it, so let's just get on with the house cleaning. I do want to say thank you guys for coming back and listening. It does mean a lot to me. You guys constantly take time every day to download these episodes, to share these episodes, to constantly keep letting me know how you feel, whether you like my stupid face or not. Even though you can't see it this time, because we're not doing an audio, ver- we're only doing an audio version this time, and no video version. And... <sighs> I do also want to say thank you to the Patreon backers as well for supporting the show. You guys are greatly appreciated. And if you want to become one, you can click the little links down below. However, you know, addressing the elephant in the room, clearly this is not your regularly scheduled programming. We're doing another real talk again after last week's episode. And there's a lot of reasons why I did this. Mainly because after taking some time and thinking about a lot of things, it only makes sense that we finally go back to this topic because I've always alluded to doing it again because it only made a lot of sense to do it again. And you guys really enjoyed when we did the relationship topic like all those years ago. And it was one of the most, like being transparent is one of the most successful episodes we ever did. It was a very popular episode. It was very helpful for a lot of people. And I mentioned that when we do another part or continue the conversation, we would have another person on. And so this time I got one of my good friends. You know, I'm trying to intro him the best that I can. And I'm like, the best way I can put it is this is literally, you know, a homie, a brother from another mother, my running buddy, the only person crazy enough to want to work out with me. And so introducing my friend Adonis, I'm just going to let him talk about, you know, just, you know, a little bit about himself. And then we'll just go straight into the topic because we're going to talk about relationships. Part two. Yeah, guys. So, uh, yeah, like he said, Josh said, uh, my name is Adonis Galen, a big buddy of his, big buddy of mine. Um. Yeah, like you said, running buddy, love to exercise, stuff like that. Um, I do like talking about, um, you know, certain situations such as these as well. And I'm honestly glad to be out here on this podcast, on this show. And um, just to give you guys a little bit of knowledge about, you know, the topic today. So, yeah, welcome. yeah, absolutely. And the reality is, you know, being honest, when we talk about relationships and we look at today's society nowadays, especially when it comes to dating, obviously, I look at myself and I look at how my experiences have changed and my viewpoints on many things have changed as I've gotten older, as I've gained a little bit more experience. And if I'm being transparent with you guys, yes, a lot of those experiences will be good. A lot of those experiences will be bad. But again, the point still stays that the purpose of doing these kind of conversations, especially over things like this, is not to belittle people. It's not to, oh, just find a way for some guys that are single just to vent on their frustrations about being single or a way of people just finding a way to just, oh, just bash their exes or something like that. That's not the whole point. We're not doing that here. And essentially I never will allow that because something that I've always learned, and this is probably an important lesson that I want us to take throughout this entire conversation is people that say they love you will never actively try to harm you, whether it be with their actions, whether it be their words, people that genuinely love you and care about you. Yes, they will do things that will hurt. That will happen. However, it is not their intention to harm you, to make your life miserable. Now, if somebody is doing that, then you should begin to question the legitimacy in the relationship. And I know the point, you know, I want us to get that overarching theme in this episode because it is going to be fairly long. Let's just be transparent here. But unlike last time where we had questions and where people had sending questions, things like that, this one, we're mainly going to talk about specific little topics in relationships because as I've gotten older, I've read a lot more books. I've had the opportunity of listening to a lot more wiser men and women who have obviously seen a lot more life, have experienced a lot more. And that's essentially what we're talking about. So when we talk about dating, and it's one of the funny things, because me and Adonis, we always talk about dating on a regular basis. And so I know Adonis, like right here in front of me, has a couple books. And I don't know if he wants to intro some of those books and explain, you know, why he 
has read some of those books or, you know, how can he take some of the life lessons that he has applied from those books into his current life? Yeah. Um, so a few books I have here. Some of these books were mentioned by, you know, some of my leaders. Um, one of these books actually helped my parents in their marriage. And it's a very popular book that I honestly recently just read, which to me is the, actually the, probably the most important out of this list. And it's called The Five Love Languages. So mm. five love languages, right? There's words of affirmation. There's quality time, acts of service, physical touch, and receiving gifts. Now, these are love languages that when it comes to a relationship, even before marriage, you need to learn about your partner, but you also need to learn about yourself. And the reason why um, I read this book, like I said, I hope uh, save my parents' marriage, I hope many people out in their relationship and so on and so forth. And I think it's a great way to, you know, sort of get an idea about what you need to do, um, or what you need to learn when it comes to, you know, finding your wife or finding your partner and knowing, knowing if that person is the one for you. So, um, author is Gary Chapman, um, you know, New, New York best time seller. Um, he pretty much gives a lot of advice um, between um, couples, you know, no matter what the situation is. And um, yeah, there's a little bit of clarity and humor in this book. But the biggest thing is that I learned from this book is that um, I think when it comes to relationship communication, mm. communication even is like probably the biggest thing anybody anybody needs everybody everyone needs you know and i don't think that's just in like a relationship purpose i feel like that's in any relationship period um you need to be able to communicate about your loved one about you know what you like what you don't like what you want them to do what you rather not have them do and that's why the five love, love language is important so let's say mine was quality time right what gary chapman has couples do couples do is they they read this book or they talk to each other have a conversation about you know their love language they try to figure it out and what the other spouse does for another, they, they do that person's love language, even when they don't want to do it, which is a key part of the relationship and so forth. So if mine's quality time, my partner's going to, even if she doesn't want to, but she does it out of love, she's going to, you know, I don't know, maybe watch a movie with me. Uh, we're going to go on a run together or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's quality. Like, it really just depends on what your um, love language is. Um, that's specifically mine. I took the test and acts of service. Um, but you also need to do your partner's love language as well. It doesn't go vice versa. I mean, it doesn't go, my bad, <laughs> wrong terminology. It doesn't go one way and then not the other. You both need to understand each other. You both need to effectively have communication with each other. And you both need to be able to pretty much do the love language that both of you really love and need. You know, there's a lot of, marriage is hard. You know, being in a relationship is hard. It's not easy. But if you both do the things that you both pretty much love um, doing for one another, that is going to bring a lot of a lot of great value to your marriage. You know, even if you don't want to do it, you know, that's point of marriage. If you love somebody, you're going to do it for them, even if you don't like to do it, because, you know, at the end of the day, that marriage will bring happiness pretty much. You know, make you get both stronger as a couple. Um, that's not obviously the best way to explain it. I would honestly strongly advise you guys to read this book. Um, this is a book that was recommend, recommended by a lot of people, but specifically I saw my parents, um, how they were with each other, how they treated each other, and I asked them, how did you guys end up becoming like this? This book specifically was the reason why they helped in their marriage, you know, because previously they were divorced and then they went to a marriage counselor. This book was recommended. And mm -hmm. because of this book, this book changed millions of marriages. And and yeah, that's this is why I brought this book. This book means a lot to me, even though I haven't been married yet. I'm only 20 years old, but it's still a good idea to get, you know, the knowledge from somebody who's been working with multiple married couples and so on and so forth. It literally helps people out in my life to become better and honestly help me the way I am today. So, um, yeah, five love, five love Languages by Gary Chapman. Um, I strongly advise anybody to read it. You to read it too, Josh, so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, and then um, how many more, but. I do wanna add on to that because there are a lot of key takeaways that I feel like people need, if they haven't realized it while listening to that conversation, that there are key takeaways. We talked about communication and you hinted at the idea of sacrifice. And I feel like for a lot of people, and this is probably what's gonna get people pissed off and probably mad at me and sending me messages and shit like that. But we need to establish this idea that love is not a feeling. A lot of people are going to get mad about this. People have debated this for hundreds, if not thousands of years. 
about the idea of if love is truly a feeling and you know i want to be transparent about this and people that know me well obviously a lot of my views on dating a lot of my views on marriage and love is going to be based off you know my personal beliefs in the bible and things like that and in the bible it does talk about the idea of love but when it talks about it it mentions it in the way of acts of actual action it's not a feeling every time it's described it has never been described as a feeling it uses a lot of action verbs like every wedding you've ever been to will always quote that specific bible passage that is always known as the love chapter or the love chapter or oh, love chapter so that's twice the love verse where it focuses on that love is kind love is patient love is slow to anger love holds no record of no wrongs love is sacrifice it mentions all these things that are choices that you have to do on a regular day basis and i feel like for a lot of people nowadays when it comes to love and dating and relationships we tend to just give up when the second something bad happens and some people can say well what are the circumstances and i'm like yes we acknowledge those let's be honest here there's always going to be it depends on factors in every situation it's never going to be as black and white as we want it to be that's just not realistic because people are not even black and white people do different choices and make different decisions based off circumstances now some circumstances can be pretty messed up some circumstances can be much better you know we can weigh and we can have this debate about like good and wrong and stuff like that but as we've noticed in today especially like in our age group because we've noticed it not only in our lives but in the lives of people around us is that this whole idea of just mean of treating people as a means to an end rather than an end in themselves and it's one of those very dangerous things that's why things like hookup culture have existed and currently are flourishing because well people just don't want to commit and that's if that's their prerogative you know that's their prerogative let's just be honest here but we also have to acknowledge the downsides that come with that as well and the same thing even goes for dating like we are not getting better at this as a society overall dating is only a fairly new concept this has been established this idea has only been around for around 120 something years it's still fairly new we're still trying to figure this out like heck people are still writing books there's a reason why when you go on amazon or you go on any podcast they're always going to be talking about dating relationships marriage that's why these books are always the best sellers because this is such a prevalent topic where people just don't talk about it as much or i wouldn't say they don't talk about it it's just everyone wants to talk about it everyone wants advice because we clearly are doing something wrong and i don't know like from my personal experience i know if donna's has had some experiences in his life and there's a reason why he chose the books that he did and in my personal experiences i know that 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 is a lesson i've had to wrestle with heavily is learning to put the needs of somebody else before yourself but you also have to be mindful when you're doing that is not to lose yourself in the process not to forget who you are not to essentially become so overly dependent on the other person that you genuinely forget who you are that you forget your own autonomy and I'll be transparent with you guys. I've talked about this multiple times with, you know, when we even talked about the relationships last time, that's what happened to me. I, I got so caught up in the relationship that I forgot what life looked like with when it was just Josh. Like I only thought about life with me and that person. And it obviously caused a lot of harm. And as I look at my life now, I'm like, yeah, it definitely did some damage if i'm being transparent it you know it caused me to have some trust issues with people with girls specifically it's caused me to i've noticed that my emotional and mental have degraded because that's what happens when you when you let yourself go and you forget who you are when that, something happens like that and i don't know like if adonis like how personal he wants to get with it i don't know if he just wants to focus on his books and anything else he brought but that's the whole point of the real talks is the conversation's real, it's honest. These aren't made up stories. These aren't just people pumping smoke out of their ass. It's just, these are real conversations that people deal with every day. And it's like, why not engage in them, you know? I don't know if Donis has anything to add. And like, yeah, just for me to add that, cause you said something that um, Gary Chapman actually spoke about. And it was like, you know, people not staying until, you know, the marriage or any relationship starts hitting like, you know, like rock bottom or you know when one little bad thing starts happening they both mm. separate so what gary chama says in the book that i think is pretty important is you know when you first meet a girl or she meets you 
both are like, you know, madly in love with each other. You know, he uses the term obsession, but you both keep thinking about each other. You know what I'm saying? You first meet, that's all you think about when you go to bed. That's all you think about when you wake up. You get distracted from work. You know, that first little interaction, that first stage of at least a, when a relationship, before a relationship happens, you both just start thinking about each other all the time before something eventually happens. And it's like an obsession. And then when you guys start the relationship, and then once you get the marriage and everything, the wedding, you know, you both are just completely in love with each other, right? Like everything's gonna go perfect. Everything's gonna be positive. There's not gonna be no bad, like anything wrong with the marriage. Nothing's bad gonna happen between you two and so on and so forth, right? And he speaks about that because people are so blind with the, you know, the positive stuff, the love, the wedding, all that sort of stuff that they don't think about what could happen after the marriage. Mm. And what he says is, you know, pretty much after the marriage, yeah, everything goes good before, but then one, after the marriage, pretty much they're pretty much the same regular people before they even met. So, you know, um, pretty much selfish in a way. You know, they're not they're not loving each other the way they were before, or even yeah. or even at the wedding. You know, because now since they have a ring now, so on and so forth, everything's gonna go positive. Everything's gonna go normal, and that's not clearly the case. Like you said, you know, it's, it's not it's, it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy. It's very difficult. It's very now it's like very extremely difficult. You know. And that's why I say communication um, is extremely effective. And um, I think when one of my books, The Ready or Not, which talks about 12 conversations before you have to have marriage, he speaks about certain topics that people should have before they even get a, <laughs> put a ring on that finger. And I'm not gonna go into all of them, um, but one of the most important, well, some of the important ones was like, you know, obviously your past life, we talk about this, your sex yeah. life, you know, um, we're in college, it's student debt, you know, you're bringing debt into the marriage. How many kids do you want? Where do you want to live? Um, how are you guys going to be? Is your, is your family going to be traditional? You know, both of you going to work and you're going to put your kids in daycare. Is a man going to work or the woman going to work? Why won't you stay at home? Um, stuff like that. Um, and there's multiple, there's many, many more. But those are the things that you should have a conversation with, with your partner or before partner um, before you guys, you know, get married. Just so you guys know, you know, what to expect from each other. You know, where you both come from. And stuff like that. Even your past life, were you physically abused? Were you, um, I mean, grew up in a two parent or one parent single household? Like stuff like that. And stuff like that is very important because it can play a very crucial role into your marriage. You know, because stuff, stuff that happens in the past, it can bounce back and come up in the future, some way or somehow. And mm. that's what that book pretty much talks about. It talks about conversations you need to have before you, um, before you get married. And like I said, it's not gonna go good. You know, you start, you're in love with that partner in the beginning. Oh, everything's all positive. Everything's all well. But then after that, after that marriage, that's when you see marriages start to shift. It starts to pretty much go downhill because they don't have that same feeling as they had before, um, especially being around each other so much and stuff like that. And, um, and like you said, you know, you start losing yourself, you know, because you're so invested maybe into that person or you're so invested into that person for so long that you start losing your, you know, your own identity. Yeah, your own identity. And then that could play a part too. So then when you start losing your identity, and you ask yourself, why are you like this? You start blaming the other per person mm. because that person made you this, that person made you that. And that's not, that's not really the case, I think. I think if you both just really just communicate with each other, um, talk about, you know, even the worst, like the worst things, the most uncomfortable, most difficult topics, your marriage will bliss. Um, and that's the problem with people. Communication, you know, he even says in the book, if you're not good at communication, this book ain't for you. Mm. Point blank period. I think that's life in general. If you can't go out of your way to talk to somebody, no matter how bad or good the situation is, I don't think you're ready for any relationship, honestly. Mm. Um, that's so. totally not going to get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's totally going to get us in he trouble. He speaks about you shouldn't hide anything from your partner. Mm. He, he, he quoted a verse from the Bible or something like that. It was like Adam and Eve. Like they felt comfortable being naked around each other. And it wasn't just physical, it was emotional, spiritual. They can tell each other anything without feeling judged by the other. Mm. Um, they can see their body without feeling judged, like anything like that. And that's how people should be one, you know? Uh, I think you even said it before, you know, when you're married. It's two it's becoming two, one. Two become one. And, he's, and he mentions that like, I don't know how many times in the book, just to keep the reader reminded. And that's how it should be, you know? Talk to each other about anything, don't feel judged about. Um, don't judge one another stuff like that don't feel uncomfortable that's your partner that's your partner for life you both should be able to say anything to each other without feeling any sort of resentment from one another and that's the problem with couples i feel like they just try to hide things because they're afraid mm -hmm. of embarrassment afraid of um 
being condemned and so on and so forth then yeah man i mean i just wish it was better but hey it is what it is right i think like personally adding on to that there's a lot of things but i want to start with that whole idea of like people are so focused on getting to the wedding that they forget what it's like afterwards they just fantasize about the dream day the dress you know the venue the people there the food whatever it may be you plan all of this stuff and yet people tend to forget okay now we actually have to be married like people don't seem to realize that marriage doesn't start like it literally immediately begins the day the wedding like after the wedding it's like now you are day one married this is where it's real this is where it actually will get challenging and sometimes i feel like people and this has been debated heavily by multiple like for years that the impact that say social media hollywood Mm -hmm. movies tv shows have created about this fantasy about marriage and this happily ever after or this idea of oh you have to find your soulmate and it's like guys we have to establish this one Hollywood and TV is probably the worst role model we should ever have, especially when it comes to something as sensitive as something as important as something as meaningful and long lasting as marriage. Because think about it, every movie, whether it be a Disney movie, a Disney movie with princesses and princes, or even just romantic films of the guy chasing the girl, you know, everyone loves those stories. They always show you when they get together, but they never show you what it's like afterwards. Because this is the problem we run into when we start treating love as a feeling because it's like, oh, you get those butterflies going, you know, you get that new car, you know, that it's kind of bad to say it that way, that new car smell. Mm -hmm. You just, you love it. But then as you start to use it more, you start to get more comfortable. You're like, okay, yeah, you know, this is the usual thing. And you start to become numb. You don't actively start pursuing it anymore. And I feel like that's what happens, especially with a lot of guys, because some people get mad when people say this, like, oh, they want the guy to chase. And I'm like, I don't blame them. I think it's good that the guy should be chasing the girl, that the guy should be making the effort to engage because, you know, if you're the one putting the ring on it, homie, you probably, you know, and people have established this, guys are very territorial. If they want something, they will get it. Now, let's be mindful of that when it comes to people, you know, like obviously with consent and things like that, you know, let's be mindful of these factors. But usually if a guy is interested in a girl, he will go out of his way to express his feelings. He will be the one to initiate the date. If he wants, you know, and obviously on the first dates and stuff like that, if there's something long-term, he's gonna pay for the dates. People can debate that. We can have that conversation another time. But in this situation, guy pays for the dates, initiates, creates the next date. If they want to have a next date, go from there. Like you begin this process of the chase, but it's like sometimes Hollywood has influenced us to think, no, it's like, nah, bro, it's just, got to go through all this hardship, all this BS to get there. And I'm like, guys, when it comes to dating, you really don't have to deal with a lot of crap because it's like, if you think about it, people ask, like you even mentioned some of the questions, people get offended when you ask about the past because some people are like, oh, why does it matter? And it's like, well, it does matter because these are just the objective facts in the matter is some people say, oh, why should I talk about my past with my partner? I'm like, well, if you have a sexually transmitted disease, don't you think that's very important to talk about? You know, if there's something that, you know, if you've been emotionally abused, sexually abused, and this is going to cause you to be more stiff about your, you know, your more intimacy with your partner, the physical intimacy, these are going to be concerns that you're going to see if you're not willing to be open and express some of these emotions or some of these things that you've done in the past, then you're gonna have problems because then if it comes up randomly, it's like you'd rather have that conversation early on, know what you're getting into, or in this case, actually learn to find healing and move on from a lot of those hurts and that past trauma. Because I feel like for a lot of people, and I also say this from my own experience, where it's like, people feel like they get demonized by their past. Like, and this can be very detrimental. Like if you're dating somebody, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, if you know, if you share your past and they hold it against you, you probably shouldn't be there anymore. You, that clearly shows, hey, this person is not willing to forgive. This person is constantly going to keep reminding me. They're constantly keep thinking that I'm the same person when I made those poor choices. Now it's different. Like, like I say it like this. If you meet a part, meet someone and you talk about it and you say, hey, I've slept with somebody else before you. And they're going to be like, okay, you know, 
what does the process look like? How has the healing process gone after that? If you don't feel bad about it, you know, if you're the person talking to that person, you probably should not date them. Let's just be real. If they don't feel bad about their poor choices before them, because people say, what's so bad about sex before marriage? And it's like, this is where it starts to get really funky, especially when we talk about this whole thing of soul ties. The fact that even the idea of soul ties exists nowadays is due to the fact that we are doing things outside of the safety and security of marriage. That's why people say, look, it's better to just stay a virgin and shit like that be you know stay like that until you're married because you'd rather not deal with all the baggage that comes with having other experiences because depending on the person they might feel like you're going to compare them they might like it's going to create these feelings of like am i good enough you know and it it causes it can cause a lot of harm now if you talk about it beforehand and you actively show hey i made this decision beforehand i acknowledge that this was not a good call and I've actively moved away from it. I've actively, you know, repented. I've obviously have chosen a better path and I'm choosing to focus on you. If that person does that, hey, that person's ready. Like, I'm not trying to demonize people that are not virgins because I'm gonna be honest here, I'm, a, I'm not a virgin. I've clearly, I've had sex outside of marriage, but I'm also not gonna sit here and say that my poor choices dis define me. Yes, are they my choices? Did I make those choices? Yes, I acknowledge that but I'm not going to be defined by those choices. Instead, I'm going to pick myself up, dust myself off and keep moving forward and not repeat those choices. So that when the time comes, I will make sure that, hey, I know I have to be honest and transparent with my partner, whoever may be, if they ask me that question and I'll be honest with them, I'll be upfront, I'll be clear, hey, this happened, I wanna be honest with you, I don't wanna hide anything, but I also want you to know, hey, I have shown over this course period, this period of time, like say five years, I have not done this with anybody. I have, you know, stayed pure, if you want to use that word, that I've chosen to abstain from this because I want to make sure that I am focused on you and that you have my undivided attention, especially in something as sacred and, you know, as intimate as that, because that's what happens is when you have sex with somebody, yes, you begin to create this emotional tie. Some people say, no, you don't. That's why casual sex. And I'm like, on some levels, you will create some emotional attachment. You will, it just happens. And it that's why they tell you, don't have sex outside of marriage because you're going to create these ties. And to be honest, some people have always coined this phrase. There's a reason why dating and breakups right now are starting to feel like divorces when the breakup happens. Cause it's like, we are essentially trying to play married in dating when these are two radically different things. There is different standards, there's different ways of going about things. And I know obviously as we go through some of these other books too, we're gonna tackle a lot of these ideas, but I don't know if Adonis wants to add on to that. Um, what I would just add on is, um, you said about, you know, why should somebody talk about their past? <clears throat> and I think, you know, no, if it comes down to trust, you know, um, you should trust to your partner. You know, if you can't trust that your partner can, you know, understand or, you know, help you out with a certain situation or, you know, just be able to communicate with you about your past, then that's a problem on you because obviously you don't trust your partner mm -hmm. and with marriage, it comes with trust first, you know, um, you have to be able to tell you to each other things, um, before, um, before you guys get married. Mm -hmm. So I would say trust is definitely a big one. You know, if someone doesn't tell you, if you were to meet a girl and she doesn't tell you about your past, even if you guys both been dating for like a year or two and so on and so forth, she doesn't trust you. And that right there to me is like a red flag um, mm. or a red, a red light, you know, my author would call it, but that's something like, cause that shows that she don't trust you. And then who knows what else she's hiding from you and so forth that could, you know, ruin the marriage. Mm. And that's pretty uh, big as well. I think another thing we talked about premarital sex, but I will also add in another addiction that probably that really like hurts a lot of men and that's pornography. Mm. A lot of men, whether they want to admit it or not, at a certain point have been addicted to pornography. Even some of these authors that I read or some of these like, you know, pastors, these, these leaders, they admitted that pornography was a problem. But the thing, the difference between them and most others, they were able to share that with their spouse and their spouse were able to understand the situation, help them through that situation and so on and so forth. Um, and I had many conversations with guys about that and they opened up, you know, best way to open, open up about something, especially an addiction. Like the best way to, I, I think the best way to cure an addiction is to be able to talk about it, mm -hmm. especially with other people who go through the same thing as you. And 
a lot of men, they feel, you know, ashamed about stuff like that. They don't want to, you know, just like how a woman in her past is same thing with us when it comes to stuff like that. And I think that's a very big thing too. And then you also talk about premarital sex and JP in his book, um, Welcome to Adulting, speaks about that as well. And, you know, pretty much the more partners you have, you know, the worse it might be for your marriage. Because like you said, you start comparing, 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 and overall it just makes your partner or you feel unsatisfied, you know, mm. especially from a sexual standpoint. And then you're gonna start to resent him. You're gonna start to, you know, look for emotional love outside the marriage. I think that's what Gary Chapman also said. And that obviously creates a problem within the marriage. And then you don't look up to him as a man anymore. You know, you're not gonna long and respect him, you know, and the same thing for the guy and the girl, you know, if a guy goes out and looks for another woman to have sex with, he's no longer gonna really respect his wife or love his wife as much as he, he did in the beginning. And that's why Hollywood and all those other movies and stuff like that play a very big role. Cause they think that it's, they live in reality. They live in a fantasy world. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you know, of this and that. And this is not how it is. Um, so yeah, those are the biggest things I would say. Um, and yeah. Cause I know like adding on to that, we're, ooh, there's definitely a lot there. We're trust, another big factor. Because let's be real here guys and girls that are listening. Trust, you have to be willing to trust your partner. And to be honest, that can be hard because a lot of your past experiences will determine how much you trust somebody. Yes, should you, when you're engaging in a relationship, should you be willing to trust the person 100%? Yes, you should be. Now, I say that as somebody that I always say trust is earned. I always believe with a relationship, that's the whole point of having communication, of having conversations, because you begin to notice these trends, these patterns in people, and it's like, okay, what this person says is lining up with what they do. And that's obviously another main thing in there is like, do actions line up with what they say? Because people can say whatever they want. Let's just be real here. Like people have coined this phrase for, you know, even my mom and my dad's generation, which is saying a lot because they've been alive obviously longer. That it's like people can say whatever the hell they want. Their actions are what matters the most because, you know, they can say, hey, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z for you, and they don't do it. At the end of the day, they didn't do it. So it's like, they can say whatever they want. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, actions are what speaks louder than words. This has been said throughout pretty much almost human history. People agree. Actions will always speak louder than words. And especially in dating and in marriage, you have to be willing to prove what you say. Like, you're not just gonna pump smoke out your ass. Like you literally have to, well, cash out the checks that your, your mouth is writing. And in many ways, I think about all of that and it's like trust is such a key fundamental thing in relationships. That's why people have conversations. That's why you have communications. Because at the end of the day, if you're questioning time and time again where your partner is 24 seven, there's some red flags in there, not just with them, but also with yourself because you have to, you know, it both goes both ways at the end of the day. You have to be willing to trust your partner. They're willing to trust you. Like prime example with long dating, long distance relationships. That's a huge trust thing because let's be real. One person is say over here, the other person's over here. The only way they communicate is over text and over FaceTime and phone calls. Let's be real. That requires a whole lot of trust. And if you already have trust issues with people, yeah, you probably should not consider that option. With marriage, the same thing goes. Like a lot of wives when, you know, obviously a lot of wives or husbands when they're separated for a long period of time, like, yeah, they're obviously gonna wonder what are they doing? If, you know, one has a business trip in another country and you're stuck over here, you're wondering what the heck's going on over there, you know? Especially if they don't talk to you in like a day or two or something, like you're obviously gonna be worried, you're gonna be concerned and you're gonna start running through scenarios in your head. And I honestly believe that trust, communication, you know, what love really is, a lot of these factors dictate the type of relationship that you will have, whether it be dating or whether it be marriage. Because if we want to focus on dating right now, dating is one of those fascinating things, isn't it? Especially with people in our age range where, let's be real, in college, what is the popular thing to do? Hook up. That's the popular thing people do in college. This isn't just people like, oh, we're, they're just saying this just because like, no. It's, especially the school that we go to, it's very common that hookup culture is very popular. That's what people want to do. Now, there will be people that want something serious. Let's be honest here, there will be. But usually in college towns, this is what happens. Like you can argue the facts, but it's like, this is what has been seen time and time again. Now, 
Do I think it's gonna be, you know, overwhelming? No, I think that it's just gonna be, there's gonna be more hookup culture than there will be like settling down culture. Because this is one of the things where people have talked about, especially as you get older, you notice it how, you know, when you're young, you wanna just mess around, do funny stuff. But as you get older, that's when you start to realize like, hey, I wanna settle down now. I wanna find a family, you know, I wanna build a family with somebody, you know, I want, you know, I want that white picket fence and stuff like that. And it's just, it's just funny because it's like, don't you think it'd be better to prepare for that rather than just go around and, you know, just be an idiot? Doesn't it make more logical sense that if you want this long term, if you want a healthy, long lasting marriage with a beautiful family, you know, a, you know, a nice home, like a stable home for your kids, doesn't it make sense that you should be preparing for that beforehand rather than like reacting to it? Because it's like. That, I think in many ways that shows just your levels of maturity and that shows how prepared you are for the challenge that comes ahead, you know? I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. So yeah, I would just um, add a little bit to that. Um, JP, and I'm sorry guys, I know I didn't say his name. Jonathan, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Uh, Paluka. Paluka, yeah. Um, from Dallas, right? He lives in Dallas. Well, okay, so long story short, JP used to be in Dallas and now he's out in Waco. Okay, yeah. But sorry, I run Terrace Creek in Waco. Yeah, sorry guys. I know I keep saying his name or acronym, but just so you guys can get a little bit of who he is. But yeah, he um he talks about like dating too. And nowadays and compared to back in back before, you know. Mm -hmm. Back then people used to date to get married. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, like you said, hookups, people date just to have fun, you know, not knowing the consequences of, you know, their actions today. And that's the biggest thing that I have a problem with, you know. Right now, I, I, I date to marry, you know, but that's why also I've been single for so long because when I look at, especially in the college environment, it's not like that for, you know, pretty much majority of the population. No, yes, yeah, so obviously other, other people out there who will probably have that same mindset as me. Yeah. You know, yes, but, you know, possibility and probability. The probability of funding that, probably a lot lower than, you know, hookups and so on and so forth. But is it possible? Absolutely. Um, and that's just... Yeah, that's just the biggest thing, especially for college students, you know. And that's what he pretty much tells about, that's what he pretty much preaches about, you know, toward, toward us young adults, you know. Um, the actions that you do today, hookups, you know, going around doing all this, you know, ignorant stuff, it will have consequences in the future. And that's where, you know, the communication before marriage and talking about your past and so on and so forth is very crucial and very important. Because the more stuff you do in the past, the, the least likely you're able to tell somebody that. Um, about your past because you're gonna feel so embarrassed about it, you know, I guess hurt. I don't know, you just can look back on it and you're gonna feel very disappointed about yourself. It's gonna make you not want really to communicate that to, you know, your partner, whoever. Um, and that's why, you know, dating today is just, it's not, it's not good at all, pretty much. Um, especially how it was back then, you know. People wanted to date to get married, people nowadays just wanted to date to have fun, not knowing the consequences. Um, and that's what he preached about in one of his books and yeah, that's all I really have to say about that, but yeah. I think adding on to that, there's, I think there's a very important lesson that everyone should take away, especially when it comes to relationships. It's not about lowering your standards, rather it's lengthening your patience. And sometimes, let's be real, as people, we get desperate. You know, if things aren't working out, you know, say like, in my, let's say, let's use me. Like my age category, 23, or about to be 23, about to graduate college, about to start a career, and you're single. That sucks. Like, especially when you see your friends around you getting married, already having kids, already having a house, you know, they're already settled down, you know, they got, they got the life, you know, and it hurts. Let's just be real here, guys. Like, it's not that you feel, it's not that you're mad at your friends or anything or you're jealous. It's just, it obviously is going to affect you on some ways. And like in my category, yeah, like I know recently, like, yeah, I had to cut somebody out of my life. And this is where we start bleeding into like some of the distinctions between what you should tolerate and not tolerate in dating and marriage, because these will be wildly different because yes, in marriage, I think there's a higher threshold for what you should tolerate, but there's obviously some outliers that should not be tolerated. In dating, some people can debate it should it be a one strike policy, one strike and you're out, or you know, should it be okay? Let's see how this person, like, if they make a mistake, how do they respond? 
you know, like seeing, do they feel bad about it? Do they genuinely want to make things right? And I feel like this is where you start running into these depends on because some people will say, they'll, they'll be adamant, they'll say it with their chest. If you screw up once in a dating relationship, game over. Like you get no chances, you're done, you already showed your character, move on. And prime example, like some, what the example everyone always uses is cheating. If you cheat in dating, yeah, let's be real. Like I, like personally for me, I agree. If you cheat in dating, game over. You know, it's game over. Don't try to fix it. Just move on, you know? And, you know, same thing with abuse. Same thing with, you know, if someone's actively trying to harm you and emotionally manipulate you and things like that. Yeah, let's be real. You really should walk away. Is it easier said than done? Oh yeah, it is. Because let's be real, there's this beautiful thing called sunken cost theory, which is basically, you've already pumped in all this time and effort with somebody. And they've been doing this for a couple years to you. And you still keep sticking around because it's all you know. And for a lot of people, that's gonna strike some nerves. It's gonna strike a chord. And you know, I'm just being honest, it applied to me. And I had to do a lot of introspection and you know, understanding that, look, people on the outside, my mentors, leaders and everything, they weren't trying to tell me to move on to hurt me or to, or to make me feel bad or harm me. It's just, they were trying to teach me, hey, bud, from our experiences, when has this ever worked out? You keep trying to play this game of, well, I am the exception to the rule. You're just going to end up being another statistic at the end of the day because it has never worked. And there's a reason why it hasn't. And in marriage, I don't think the one strike policy should apply unless it's one of these extremes. Like obviously if domestic abuse or like they're trying to actively kill you. Yeah, you really should just get out of there. Let's be real here. Cheating, that's a tricky one because some people will still stick around and they'll still have a happy thriving marriage after like the person has asked for, you know, asked for forgiveness, has gone through the process of rehabilitation and things like that like of repairing that relationship. People have had great marriages and they've obviously had a partner cheated in those marriages. But there's obviously some that are like, you know, you cheat once, game over, homie. And I'm like, you know, what can you say? But I think with dating, we really go down this weird rabbit hole of, as I mentioned earlier, we treat dating as marriage and it's like, no, we cannot do that. Dating should be the stepping stone for marriage. It should not be marriage in itself because that's why when you break up, after something happens, it feels like a divorce. You create these soul ties, this idea that I alluded to earlier. It's like soul ties are when you genuinely like give a piece of yourself to one another. Like you have become so entrenched with one another. There's so much communication. There's so much, op which people are like, what's wrong with so much communication and openness? Well, there's a problem when you become that level of open about every single detail of your life, even like even after you break up and you're still like talking, because this is the whole thing people said, you can be friends with your exes. Guys, there's a reason why you can't. It's this whole, like the fact that the idea of soul ties exists is because of this bull crap of you can be friends with your exes. You can't, I'm sorry. Like I, I was active believer, I thought you could. And I learned the hard way, you can never be friends with your ex because the only reason you can ever be friends with them is if you still have feelings for them. There's still something there. Those are the objective psychological facts is because if there's something still there, there's a reason why you can be friends, but it's going to hurt because imagine this, you are so emotionally attached to someone you've been, you know, you thought you were going to marry them and everything like that. You break up, you try to get back together and then you see them with another person for guys like that are going through that. It feels like to them, it feels like they're literally seeing their wife with another man. That kills men on the end because it's, a, you know, men are territorial. It kills them. Same thing with girls. If they see a guy that they wanted to marry and that they were so close, like obviously like they had sex with each other and things like that. Like they're so attached. Like they know everything about their lives. They always talk about their new partners with them. It hurts like a bit, like it hurts. And that's why people say you can't be friends with your exes because you just can't imagine seeing them with somebody else. And that hurts. And sometimes that's why people say, hey guys, you can't be friends with them because it, you can't, you cannot physically imagine seeing them with another person. Like you have to just completely cut off every bit of communication with them and move on. And that's easier said than done. Like, hey, I'll be honest, I'm going through it right now. It hurts. 
Like, I feel so many emotions. I feel hurt, mad, sad, depressed. But at the end of the day, it's what had to happen, you know? And I don't know, like, I kind of rambled on a little bit of that, but I don't know if Adonis has anything for that. No, he's good. But, yeah, just, um, yeah. Um, I would say, like, you know how we have this whole term, baby mama, baby daddy, mm -hmm. you know? I think another important uh, part, you know, the 12 conversations book also talks about it is, you know, have you been previously married? How many children do you have with that person? You know, if you were to meet a girl and she has children and so on and so forth, it's, it's great that you're going to be marrying her and meeting her children. But now you also have to pretty much, you're going to have to see the baby daddy. And I personally experienced that with my father and my stepfather. You know, my father talks to me all the time. Like you said, it hurts to see another man with your wife or so on and so forth. And that's how my father felt. He told me that all the time. It was like, you know, I'm proud I'm proud of your stepfather. I'm glad he's taking care of you, so on and so forth. But it still hurts to see another man pretty much take care, not only of my wife, but my children as well. Mm. And um, that's extremely important, um, you know, especially for a man. You know, I would never ever want to experience do something like that at all. Um, but yeah, I definitely strongly agree, you know, it, like, like Friends can't be, I mean, not friends, but Excellent. you can't be friends, friends with your ex, ex, you know. But I will also argue, if you have kids with that person, regardless, that person's going to be with you for the rest of your life, no matter how, because you both share an offspring. You both mm -hmm. share another human being or two or three or four, it doesn't matter. So you, either way, you both are going to be connected because my parents haven't spoken, they spoken like maybe two weeks ago. They haven't spoken for over 15 years, but still day and day and day, they're going to have to communicate with each other. There's eventually going to be a day where they have to see each other. Why? Because I'm the son of both of them. You know, even yeah. if my father were to remarry with another woman, he's still connected with my mother because me and my brother are the child of those two. So I will argue, yes, you can't be friends with your ex, but it's extremely, if you have a baby with that person or offspring with that person, <laughs> that person is pretty much there for the rest of your life because um, you both share something. And not bad, but special. You both share, you know, yeah, you both share something a human being together, you know, a son, daughter, so on and so forth. That's the only thing I would say. But going back to that whole thing about us from a man's perspective, seeing somebody that you once loved, you know, take being taken care of by another man and your children. That's like, like to me, that's like a nightmare. Like that's like a that's one of my biggest nightmares when it comes to life. And that's not something I ever want to experience. And just looking at my father and the way he is today, it's like I just can't be like that. Mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, I do agree that you can't be friends with exes, but I will also argue, yes, if you have children or something like that, that person the pers that person is going to be with you for the rest of your life, regardless of how you feel. Um, and sometimes it doesn't have to be a bad thing. I'm pretty sure there are people who previously had children and maybe went their separate ways that are still cool with each other, you know, yeah. stuff like that. It's no hate or anything like that between the two, even though my mom despises him, but because he never paid child support, but that's <laughs> a whole nother topic. But that's the only thing I would say. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for over that topic and so on and so forth. I think adding on that too a little bit is like, because I know we're like, we're running out of time, but I want us to talk about that a little bit. That idea of, that I mentioned earlier, that if someone truly loves you, they'll never talk bad of you. And same thing, what happens with divorces? Like, yeah, is it going to hurt? Yeah. But you also want to wish them the best. Like, hey, I'm sad that it didn't work out. I acknowledge that I wish things could have been better. Anybody will say that. Like, let's be real. In any situation after any breakup or divorce, anyone will always say, of course you can do something better. You could have done something differently. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, at the end of the day, we just got to move forward, you know? And I think it's very important that if you have gone through a breakup or even a divorce, take audit of what you're talking about when you share some of the, like, some of that stuff with other people. Are you primarily talking bad about the character of that person and just like shit talking them and be like, you know, I wish they burn in hell or something Especially like that. With children. Mm -hmm. Especially with children too, because that's another big thing is like, how are you talking about them? Like talking about that other person to those children. But same thing with like dating. If you break up with someone, are they just going to immediately shit talk you? Like once they break up, because at that point that just shows you they never loved you to begin with. Cause if they're just immediately just quit, wipe their hand, move, like talk hella shit about you and talk like, Oh, you got a shrimp dick or something. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, you probably were never loved to begin with, and that hurts. Or are you going to be the person that's like, look, I acknowledge that I could have done things differently. I acknowledge that I wish I could have given you 
the world and back, or at least I could have given you what you wanted. But I'm going to wish you the absolute best. I wish you the best with this new person. I hope that they fulfill everything that you ever wanted. And I wish you nothing but the best. And I think that's probably one of the healthier ways that I guess in today's society with dating, it's always just been be negative, screw that person, do you. And it's not, hey, why don't, instead of cursing them to like, to hell and back, wish them the absolute best. And sometimes that's hard, especially like you mentioned with kids. Like, I don't think, you don't think that that's gonna affect the relationship or outlook that they're gonna have towards that parent that's not around anymore. Yeah, if you're actively shit talking them, those kids are probably also gonna shit talk them. And who knows, maybe that person that is not there anymore, they genuinely always think about their kids. They're actively wishing them the nothing but the absolute best. Now that's different if their actions don't reflect that, but that's a whole nother topic. But I don't know, I think, I don't know if Adonis had something else because I'm like, obviously we're here chatting and face to face. I know he had some stuff in front of him that I don't know if he wanted to get off his chest. No, I would just say, you know, I guess besides all of that, you know, marriages nowadays, starting to become a lot more difficult. Um, I have a, just a little bit, a few studies, but you know, nearly 50% of the marriages here in the US today end in divorce. Mm-hmm. And then it, it increases in the second and the third marriage. So if you were to get married again the second time, you will more likely get divorced in the first time in mm-hmm. that marriage. Same thing with the third going to the second. So I'm not trying to say this to, you know, ruin your dreams about getting married. I would just say, take the advice, learn, study, you know, be able to trust your partner, speak about, you know, your experiences, their experiences, communicate with each other, become one, so on and so forth. And honestly, if you can do that and be able to serve each other with the love language and so on and so forth, you're set for life, dude, honestly. But not a lot of people can do that, sadly. And like, honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons why divorce rates are so low, you know? And if you ever do find a, you know, a bad point into your marriage, seek marriage counseling, you know, don't be ignorant because I heard a lot of couples say this too. I don't need a marriage counselor. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see a therapist or blah, 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 or something like that. And even if your partner doesn't want to, I think I would argue you still should just so, just so you can say, at least you tried and see what you can do to maybe spark the marriage. Because if you can bring enlightenment to the marriage, maybe that partner will, um, Re- recipro- what's the word? Reciprocate. 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 Um, toward your actions, and eventually they'll start doing the same. Um, but yeah, man. I think adding on to that is very important. That you know, some of the closing thoughts that I have, you know, because personally, I think it's a great conversation. I've always loved talking about dating because you know, obviously, Adonis is one of the guys that I look after and stuff like that. So we obviously talk a lot about relationships and dating, and you know, having him. Like, I want him to learn from my poor choices and not repeat them and be better and I think one of the key things in there is don't do it alone don't isolate yourself because if you get into the point where you're dating somebody and your immediate reaction is just to isolate yourself from everybody Mm -hmm. you are doomed that is the key fact and same thing goes for (laughs) marriage if you just immediately cut everyone out you are doomed to fail and some people are like what do you Josh that sounds harsh don't you think it's like no Do not try to do it alone. Have people be involved in your life. Have people that genuinely care about you that are invested in not only you, but that person's well-being as well. Have conversations. Like if something's going wrong, talk to like, don't you think it makes sense? Like if you are struggling in your marriage that you shouldn't talk to somebody that's been in a, like say a 30 plus year marriage and ask them questions about like, hey, we're struggling with this. What do we do? Like ask questions, be willing, like guys and girls, be humble. Stop being, you know, douche canoes and think you know everything because you really don't because you're not going to tell me this newlywed couple of one year knows more about marriage and dating than a 30 plus a couple that has been married for 30 to 40 plus years you don't know jack shit i and that's kind of you know i'm pushing the language here but these are the facts is like that's why i find it funny when like people that are younger than like say like under like in their 20s or something on 20 and under say that they know more about dating than someone who is married, has had kids, and has seen a lot more life. It is absolutely hysterical because that person just not shitting on them, but politely puts them in their place and be like, you don't know what you're talking about. You genuinely don't. And they hit you with facts and reasons. And then obviously you get booty tight. And then, but that's the whole point, guys. It's like, the overall point is don't try to go at it alone. 
find a healthy community group, whether it be, you know, either the guy is in a community group, you know, if you're in dating relationships, the guy should be in a dating, you know, in a community group with all guys, the girl should be in one with all girls. When you get married, find a co-ed one or a marriage one that's primarily designed for married couples. And that way you can hold each other accountable. There's, there's trust, you're building trust, you're actively seeking advice from other people and you're having people hold you accountable, how to help you to be better so that when the time comes and you two wanna get married, there is an already a firm establishment. A ton of people are affirming that yes, you two are ready. It's not of like, oh, maybe if, I don't know, like no, you will know 100% if you are ready. But that's the name of the game is like, if you desire marriage, prepare for it. Do everything that is needed to be prepared be smart, you know, in this case, like let's not be smart, get your money right. You know, obviously if you want to finish school and have a degree, maybe finish that, deal with all your debts, acknowledge and deal with any past traumas or hurts that you have. Like don't bring any baggage into the marriage specifically. Don't bring it into the relationship. If you talk about it, yeah, talk about it, acknowledge that you're working on it or show progress that you're working on it because that's what people want is they want you to be honest and be intentional. Don't lie to them. If you lie to them, game over, bro. Like you're doomed. The same thing goes with the girls. Acknowledge the current realities and move towards the future. The past is the past. You can only affect the future. And I don't know if Adonis has anything because I know we're running short on time. Yeah, just just build your foundation. You know, if you're hiding if you're hiding your marriage from your own family or friends, that honestly just goes against trust. If you can't trust your, if you can't even trust your family and friends, what makes you think you can trust your partner in that marriage? That's already a red flag. Like I said, build your foundation, you know, and don't even just seek a, um, a marriage counselor. Like you said, someone who's been like my parents, your parents, I'll probably go up to them for advice or maybe somebody else, you know, Sergio, I know you talk about him and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Like me too, just build your foundation, keep your family and friends close, you know, have trust, communicate, be able to talk about your past, so on and so forth. And I promise you, your life, will, your marriage will be a lot better than most people's. I think adding on to that, be willing to show grace when there needs to be grace. That's why I said when we mentioned that whole marriage, that whole marriage verse and things like that, there's a reason why it says love holds no record of no wrongs. That doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge the hurt that comes with a lot of those past choices, but don't hold it against somebody. Don't beat them over the head with it. Show grace, acknowledge that it hurts you. And if it hurts you, hey, that's understandable. But don't try to go out of your way to just use it against that person to hurt them or harm, like not hurt them, but harm them. Like you're actively holding it against them. You're just trying to get back at them. It's like, no, that's not real love guys. That's, that's not love at all. But hey, I, you know, I'm being honest. This is probably one of the longest episodes we've done in a while. But I do want to say thank you, Adonis, for coming on because I know we've been chatting about wanting to do this for a while. And let's be real, people are probably going to get pissed at us for what we said here. Let's be real. It's going to happen. <laughs> but like I said, when we did relationships last time, I hope my hope and desire, and I think the same thing goes for Adonis, is that people take something away from this conversation and apply it to themselves. Everything that has been said here is readily available information. This, we're not breaking new ground here, guys. It's just the fact that we aren't willing to have these conversations in a thoughtful and intentional manner, that that's why there's so much misinformation out there. And that's the whole point is like, I want to make sure that we have honest and intentional conversations here. And that's why, you know, there's no BS here. You can call us out if there's something like, hey, let's open the discussion. It's not of like, oh, we're right, you guys are all wrong. The whole thing is let's have these conversations. Like, that's why I mentioned, there's always going to be, it depends on factors. But that's the whole point is that, we open the conversation up so that we should be talking about these more and that hopefully something in here, maybe the book recommendations, maybe just things that we talked about sharing our own experiences, maybe that helps somebody, you know, eventually find that healthy partner and that healthy marriage. But Adonis, thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. And to everyone listening, thank you guys so much for taking time in your days to listen to this episode. You're probably going through hell and you're probably, you know, you had to sit through almost an hour worth, but I do appreciate it at the end of the day. If you're listening to us on a long drive, Godspeed. But as always, guys, I hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful week and weekend. Please be safe, guys. Don't do anything dumb. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Hey there. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day and listening to today's episode. If you're interested in supporting the show, whether it be financially, clicking the follow button, or just sharing the episode, it all works for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I love you guys to death.